Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin Wa ashadu an la ilaha illallah Wa ahdahu la sharika lah Wa anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh Allahumma salli ala sayyidina muhammadin wa ala ahli muhammad Wa baraka ala muhammadin wa ala ahli muhammad Kama sallayta barakta ala ibrahim wa ahli ibrahim Innaka hamidun majid Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from here on he explains to us the story of some of the story of Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam if you have noticed there's been only three prophets who have been mentioned until now in fact, those three, mm, apart from Adam alayhi salam, who was the first, and you said that was the first story for humanity and the first story in the Quran. Those three are from the Ulul Azm, from the five greatest prophets. Who are they? The first was Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, because this message was to him, right? The second one to be mentioned was Musa or Isa. Who, who came first? Who came first in Surah Al-Baqarah? Musa alaihi salam, because he came first also. And then Isa alaihi salam. And now Allah subhanahu wa taala He mentions Ibrahim alaihi salam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, this is verse number 124. وَإِذِ ابْتَلَى إِبْرَاهِيمَ رَبُّهُ بِكَلِمَاتٍ فَأَتَمَّهُنْ قَالَ إِنِّي جَاعِلُكَ لِلنَّاسِ إِمَامًا قَالَ وَمِنْ ذُرِّيَّتِي قَالَ لَا يَنَالُ عَهْدِ الظَّالِمِينَ Ibrahim alayhi salam is the father of what you call today the Semitic tribes. That is Arabs and what you call today Jews. Huh? Arabs and Jews. Because from Ibrahim alayhi salam came who? Ismail and Ishaq. We said, what is the name of Ishaq? What is the son of Ishaq, sorry? Ya'aqub alayhi salam. And who is Ya'aqub? Israel. So all of what has been mentioned about Banu Israel, their forefather at the end of the day is Ibrahim alayhi salam. Just like the Arabs, most of them, or not all of them, their forefather is Ismail alayhi salam, and after that is Ibrahim alayhi salam. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentions the great story of Ibrahim. And Ibrahim is the greatest prophet after Prophet Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam After Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Allah says وَإِذِ ابْتَلَى إِبْرَاهِيمَ إِبْرَاهِيمَ منصوب لأنه مفعول به رَبُّهُ رَبُّهُ فَاعِل And when Ibrahim was tested by his Lord إيش الفائدة في التقديم المفعول به من يعرف نعم حسر very good and when Ibrahim himself meaning him only was tested by Allah with these words to show how special he was بكلماتن Allah says by these words what are these words the مفسرون they differed لكن الله أعلم الإمام بن كثير he says كلماتن أي شرائع وأوامره ونواهيه Meaning, the Sharia Allah gave him, and the orders and the prohibitions. And when Ibrahim was tested by his Lord, with words, commands, a Sharia, and when he accepted that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made him special, Allah said to him what? Inni 
قال meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inni ja'iluka I will make you linnasi for the people imama if you look again the maf'ul bihi is muqaddam again inni ja'iluka linnasi imama I will make for the people you I will make you for the people an imam Allah did not say inni ja'iluka imaman linnas linnasi imama for everybody that is why you see everybody Muslim, Jew, Christian they respect uh, Ibrahim alayhi salam Allah promised him, I will make you an imam. What an imam means? Most of us, we know the word imam to mean imam who leads salah. Imam is a leader, very good. And in Islam, when you say imam, it is someone with great knowledge and he is up there leading people. You cannot become an imam without knowledge. Islamically, the definition of the word. But in today's world, you can become an imam and lead the salah wherever you want. Inni ja'iluka linnasi imam. For the people. For the people. Does this mean Ibrahim was sent to everybody? Because Allah says linnas. La. Lakin Allah says he is an imam for the people. Doesn't mean he is a prophet to all of them. Ibrahim alayhi salam, at this point, he teaches us manners, great manners, the character of a Muslim, subhanAllah. That is why this surah is so great. He teaches us the great character of a Muslim. Who is Ibrahim alayhi salam as of now? Imagine you didn't read the Quran yet, you don't know. What is the only definition or characteristic which you know of Ibrahim. Huh? He is a leader for people. Very good. And what do we do with leaders? Or what do leaders do? They teach us for us to do what? To follow. That's what a leader is for this day for. Right? So Allah says to us, I, I, I said to Ibrahim, I'll make you a leader. So from now on, the only thing we know about Ibrahim is what? He is a leader for us. So what are we supposed to do? Follow his way. Now listen to what Allah says or what we have to follow about Ibrahim. Because not only this verse, Allah he mentions this in another part of the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says what? Inna Ibrahim kana ummatan qanitan lillah. Ibrahim, surely Ibrahim was an ummah. What is the meaning of the word ummah? Huh? La. The word Ummah is used in the Quran with how many meanings? Who knows? How many? Four meanings. The word Ummah in the Quran has four meanings. We'll start with the easiest one. Ummah is known as a nation. A nation of people. Ummah. Second meaning? Huh? An example, a role model. And this is what it means in this ayah. Inna Ibrahim kana ummah. Surely Ibrahim was an ummah, a role model to be followed. A role model to be followed. Ummah. Another meaning of the word ummah? We just said that. That's the first one. A group of people. Time? What is the proof? And number four? Well, he finds the proof, so we save time, which he's talking about. Number four, Ummah is a religion, a way, a custom, a way, a religion. Uh, the Kufar, they said what? Inna wajadna aba'una ala, inna wajadna aba'una ala ummatin, wa inna ala atharihim la muqtadun. We found our fathers on an Ummah, a religion, a specific religion of idol worship, and we will follow them. You understand? So, Ummah, the way it was used with Ibrahim, is the same meaning Allah says here, Imam, a role model, someone we follow. Someone we follow. 
So now listen to how this great leader was, his personality. After Allah says to him, I will make you a leader for the people. What did he say? Qala, he says, وَمِن ذُرِّيَّتِي Allah. Subhanallah. He says, and of my progeny, my children. He's asking Allah right away. Ya Rabb, make from my children also my progeny, make them also leaders. Now that is a leader. Now that is a father. That is a role model. He's not selfish. That's the point. He loves good not just for himself. He wants the good to go even with his progeny. And when you say dhurriya, dhurriya, the English word is progeny. It's not just your immediate children. It's that your children and the children of your children and children of your children. That is the dhurriya. He says, Rabb, I mean dhurriyati. And of my progeny also? Qal, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala replied to, replied to that request by saying what? La yanalu ahdi al my promise, my promise will not fall on who? Dhalimeen, the oppressive ones, those are wrongdoers. So what does that mean? What does that mean? Huh? Very good, mashallah, mashallah, that is good. We'll come to that. But what does this mean? Allah said, He asked Ya Rabb and my children, my progeny. Allah says, My promise will not reach those who are oppressors. Very good. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying to Ibrahim, Yes, yes. And your children also, but no for those who will be oppressive. Yes, but no for those who are oppressive. Those will be good, the opposite of Zalimeen, as Salihin, Allah will make them Imams also, leaders in the religion. Those who are Zalimeen, oppressive, it doesn't benefit you that you are from the children of Ibrahim. That is the point. La yanalu ahad Zalimeen. And that is what we always say. Your tribe or your ethnicity, whatever you want to call it, won't benefit you. Allah says, those who are zalimeen, even from your children, my promise will not come to them. And this, the scholars, they say, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is informing Ibrahim that there will be some of his children will be zalimeen. Zalimeen. Just like today we have people who say, I am, I am Sharif. You know, I'm Hassan or Husseini. I'm Alawi. I'm from the family of Ali. I'm from the family of Hassan Hussein. Uh, I'm Ahl Bayt. Lakin is the worst criminal. What does it benefit him? What does it benefit him? Uh, Abu Lahab was Ahl Bayt. Waliyadhan Billah. And Abu Jahl. لا ينال عهد الظالمين. It is only your deeds which will put you forward or bring you back. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he said, "Ah, ومن بطأ به عمله لم يسرع به نسبه." The one whose deeds they bring him back, his lineage, his nasab will not bring him forward to Allah. Will not bring him forward. So Allah accepted this dua of Ibrahim السلام, but not for all of his progeny. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He explains to us how He gave Ibrahim السلام, a task the connection between Ibrahim السلام, and Baytul Haram, the most sacred masjid, the house of Allah, the special one. وَإِذْ جَعَلْنَا الْبَيْتَ مَثَابَةً لِلنَّاسِ وَأَمْنَا 
واتخذوا من مقام إبراهيم مصلى وإذ أنوان جعلنا البيت وماد دي هاوز داريز مكة الحرم مثابة للناس أي يثوبون إليه مرة بعد مرة ويشتقون إليه Allah says he made the house mathabatan, a place where people visit frequently and every time they visit it, they desire to go back. There's no one who has gone to that house and he wished not to go back. How many of you have gone to, Mac to that house, special house? How many of you wish not to go back? You said that one time is, is enough. Nobody. You won't find a Muslim who is sent who will say that. It's a special place. Subhanallah, Allah made that place special that everyone in the world, no matter where you come from, you relate to that place, everyone feels this is where I belong. This is where I belong. And when you just leave Al-Haram, eh, you go back to Jeddah or wherever you go to, you don't have the same feeling. Right or wrong? You don't have the same feeling. The other cities, you don't have the same feeling. But in the Haram Mecca, it's special. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it easy for all of us to go. Those who have, went, have not gone and those who have gone already. وَإِذْ جَعَلْنَا الْبَيْتَ مَثَابَةً لِلنَّاسِ Allah says. And more than that, Allah made it what? Amna. A place of am, a, aman, security. Allah made it a place of security, safety and security. Everybody who goes there feels safe. Everybody who's there is safe. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he made it haram. Haram, it is sacred. It is not allowed to carry weapons in there. It is not allowed to fight in there. It is not allowed even when you see the birds to shoo them away. It is not allowed to pluck the trees, even the herbs which grow. All of that is haram. Allah made it a place, a place of safety and security. And before the Arabs, they used to wait for each other. When people come for hajj, they would kidnap them there. Allah made it haram. وَإِذْ جَعَلْنَا الْبَيْتَ مَثَابَةً لِلنَّاسِ وَأَمْنَاءً وَاتَّخِذُوا Allah then he said and now he gives command to his Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam وَاتَّخِذُوا مِن مَقَامِ إِبْرَاهِيمَ مُسَلَّى And that is also from the dua by the way of who? Who made this dua? فَجْعَلْ أَفْئِدَةً مِنَ النَّاسِ تَهْوِي إِلَيْهِمْ إِبْرَاهِيمَ عَلَيْهِ السَّلَامِ he made that dua when he left his wife. Hajar or Sarah? Hajar. Ummu Ismail when Ismail was a baby. He made dua, Ya Rabb, I left them there. Biwadin ghayr di zara'in in the baytik al-muharram. I left them in a place which is desert. There's nothing which grows there. It was Allah's command to leave them. Faj'al, so make af'idatan min al-nasi, the hearts of people love to go there and love them. That is why everybody loves that place. Allah says though here, وَأَمْنَا وَاتَّخِذُ مِن مَقَامِ إِبْرَاهِيمَ مُسَلَّى And you should take the maqam Ibrahim, the station of Ibrahim, as a musalla, a place of prayer. I'm sure all of you have seen the maqam Ibrahim, right? The maqam Ibrahim, can you look for it on your phone so I can show those maybe you? We need one of those big phones so everybody can see. It can only be Android. <laughs> you want to start the Android OS fight here now. Maqam Ibrahim, Allah says to his prophet, when, when he commanded you to take it as a place of musalla, a place of worship. As a place of worship. That is Maqam Ibrahim. I'm sure you have seen that. 
that is Maqam Ibrahim. Now that, they made it the cage-like thing. They made it to preserve the actual Maqam. But that was not there when Ibrahim alayhi salam, uh, or the Prophet, or during the time of the Prophet alayhi salam, the cage-like thing. Oh, Right? That is the Maqam Ibrahim. And the Maqam, what is the story behind it? Like you say, it's Maqam, a place of standing. It's a place of standing. Allah, he commanded his Prophet to take that as a place of worship, meaning to pray behind it. To pray behind it. The maqam is when Ibrahim as it is coming in the next ayah. When Ibrahim was given the task of building the Kaaba. So he built it, him and his son Ismail. When they finished the lower part now, they had to go up. For those who have seen the Kaaba, the Kaaba is at least two stories in a normal building. It's two stories, if not three maybe. So he had to stand somewhere while his son Ismail passed him the bricks. So the place he stood, this is the Maqam Ibrahim. And because he stood on it a lot, the actual footprints, the actual footprints of Ibrahim are, you can see them today if you go. If you look inside that thing, you can see the actual footprint. And it's a, it's a big footprint. Like we mentioned during the story of Adam alayhi salam, Adam was how, how tall? 60 feet. Huh? 1,000 feet, feet, no, feet, feet. <laughs> <laughs> Thalathun dhira'a, this is dhira'a. This is, uh, it's around 20 meters. La thalathun dhira'a. Sittuna dhira'a, 60 of these, 30 meters, very good. Adam was 30 meters big, alayhi salam. And the Prophet sallam, he said what? The children of Adam, they continue to become smaller and smaller and smaller. So Ibrahim alayhi salam is in the middle there. From the time of Adam until the time of Ibrahim alayhi salam, then until us. So if you look, who has seen, how big is that footprint? It's almost covering this table. It's quite big. It is big. It's a big foot, like that, because he was big, and it's deep. And actually, even the, what do you call these things? The prints, you know, the prints you have, even on your feet, these lines, they actually were there. They actually were there, but they became arrest, or they were arrest by people touching the maqam. And by the way, there's no direction or order to touch the maqam. There's nothing special about it. But it's a place which is preserved. And the maqam, we have to know during the time of the Prophet wasallam, and the time of Abu Bakr, it was right next to the Kaaba. Because they were building. They were building the Kaaba. So this is the Kaaba. So it was next to it. Because he had to put the bricks. But during the time of Umar and the Muslims became so many, so many people entered into Islam. Umar, he brought it back to where it is today, to give people space. To give people space. And so that, you know, after you do tawaf, when you go around the Kaaba, the Sunnah is after you finish the seventh one, you go behind the Maqam, and this is the meaning of the verse. And you actually have to read the verse. And you pray behind it. This is the Maqam Ibrahim. This is the Maqam. Ibrahim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then says, وَعَهِدْنَا إِلَىٰ إِبْرَاهِيمَ And we gave a promise and a command to Ibrahim and Ismail. This is the first time Ismail is being mentioned. Who is Ismail? The first son of Ibrahim alayhi salam. The first son of Ibrahim alayhi salam, the father of the Arabs. Or the modern day Arabs, as they say. وَعَهِدْنَا إِلَىٰ إِبْرَاهِيمَ And we gave a promise to Ibrahim and Ismail. How 
How does this relate to the two previous verses? Before we continue. Think it, Akhwan. We said the Quran is deep. How does it relate? The last two verses. The verse we began with now. Who was promised? Very good, mashaAllah. It is like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying to us, His dua is accepted already. So Allah is giving a covenant, a promise to who? Not just Ibrahim. Ibrahim and Ismail. Ibrahim said what? I mean, Dhurriyati and my children. So Allah has given him that already. وَعَهِدْنَا إِلَىٰ إِبْرَاهِيمَ وَإِسْمَاعِيلَ أَنْ تَهِرَىٰ That both of you, you should purify and cleanse. بَيْتِيَا My house. Allah says, my house. لِلطَّائِفِينَ For those who do tawaf, going around the Kaaba. وَالْعَاكِفِينَ And those who stay there for the waiting for worship. وَالْرُكَّعِ السُّجُودِ and some who are actually worshipping, Alhamdulillah, those who are in ruku' and those who are in sujood. Allah is saying to Ibrahim and Ismail, purify this house. For who? For those who do tawaf, those who are sitting there, aqifin, those who are praying in ruku', those who are in sujood. Tawhira, purify it. What does it mean? Purify it from what? Clean it actually? Or what? Very good. Remove the idols which the Arabs used to worship or those who used to be in the haram then. Allah says to them, purify it from the idols. And tahira baytiya. Purify it from the idols and also purify it in respecting the house that it should be clean also. This is the leader. This is the leader. Some of us we think cleaning a masjid is a demeaning job. No, that is one of the best things you can do in your life to clean a house of Allah for people to worship. Those who are sitting there, those who are doing ruku', those who are reading Quran. Allah says, "Fi buyutin adin Allahu an turfa." In houses which Allah has declared they should be turfa and they should be respected. They should be respected. Cleaning the house of Allah with the intention I'm cleaning it, Ya Rabb, for people to worship you in the best state. That is the best job you can have. وَطَهِّرَا بَيْتِيَا لِلطَّائِفِينَ وَالْعَاكِفِينَ وَالْرُكَّعِ السُّجُودِ And this shows you what? It is okay for people to sleep in the masjid. Al-Aqifin, they sit, they sleep in the masjid waiting for ibadah. That's okay. That's fine. That's fine. Unless there's other concerns. Unless there's other concerns. Wal-Aqifina, wal-Rukka'i sujood. Wa idh qala Ibrahim, and when Ibrahim he said, Remember, Ikhwan, who is Ibrahim again to us? A leader. He is a leader. Allah has promised him he is a leader. If Allah has promised him he is a leader, that means he is going to Jannah, right or wrong. Yet he is making dua to show the importance of dua. And look at the dua he is making now. If he is a leader, he is a role model we have to follow, then do we have to make this dua or not? We have. Allah said to his Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. ثُمَّ أَوْحَيْنَا إِلَيْكَ نِتَّبِعْ مِلَّةَ إِبْرَاهِيمَ حَنِيفَ And then we reveal to you, Muhammad, you should follow the way of Ibrahim Hanif. Look at the dua he makes. He says, Rabbi, O Allah, Rabbi, جَعَلْ هَذَا بَلَدًا آمِنًا O Allah, make this land a land of peace. Make it a land of peace. وَرْزُقْ أَهْلَهُ and provide for the people of this land, Mecca, من الثمرات, from the fruits, من آمن منهم, 
those of whom have believed in Allah and have believed in the last day. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he replies the dua, he says what? Qala, وَمَنْ كَفَرَ And as for those who have disbelieved, فَأُمَتِّعُهُ قَلِيلًا I will give him to enjoy a bit in this life, ثُمَّ أَضَّرُّهُ إِلَىٰ عَذَابِ النَّارِ And then I will take him forcefully into the punishment of the hellfire, وَبِئْسَ الْمَصِيرِ And what an evil ending it is. That is why that land, eh, Akhwani, they could say it's a land of security and peace. We have talked about that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he reminded the Quraysh also of this great favor of peace and security. Allah says to them, لِإِلَافِ قُرَيْشِ إِلَافِهِمْ رِحْلَةَ الشِّتَاءِ وَالصَّيْفِ Allah says to them what? فَلْيَعْبُدُوا رَبَّ هَذَا الْبَيْتِ then you let them worship the Lord of this house. The Lord who did what? Alladhi atu'amahum min ju'in wa amanahum min khawf. The one who gave them food while they were in hunger and he made them feel secure after fear. These two things. Provision of food and security. The same things which Ibrahim alayhi salam made dua. Rabbi ja'al hadha baladan Amina, security, warzuq ahlahu min al-thamarat, and food, provision of food. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentions this to them also. The Quraysh, like we said, reminding them, reminding them. Allah, he reminds them. Allah, he reminds them that he is the one who gave them this great favor. A place which is full of security and they have all the fruits which they want. وَرْزُقْ أَهْلَهُ مِنَ الثَّمَرَاتِ وَرْزُقْ أَهْلَهُ مِنَ الثَّمَرَاتِ Allah says, أَوَلَمْ نُمَكِّنُهُمْ حَرَمًا آمِنًا يُجْبَى إِلَيْهِ ثَمَرَاتُ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ did we not make for them haraman amina, haraman amina, a haram which is safe and secure, of which yujba ilayhi exported to it. Yujba is an export imported into it, every kind of fruit. You go to Makkah, you get every kind of fruit you want. You'll see mangoes, you'll see strawberries, you'll see grapes, you'll see everything you want. You have to know, 99% if not 100% does not grow in Makkah. Does not grow in Makkah. But this is from the dua of Ibrahim alayhi salam. And Allah reminded the Quraysh during the time of our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam. He is the one who gave you this from the dua of Ibrahim alayhi salam. So remember, so today or tomorrow when you go to Makkah and you see all those fruits and you feel that sense of security, that is from the favors of Allah. And from the good leadership of Ibrahim alayhi salam, that he didn't just make dua for himself. Ibrahim he made dua for the place to be safe and for those believers who come there that they should get whatever they want. He was not selfish. We're repeating that point. He loved good for everybody. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he explains now the state of Ibrahim, again, because he's a leader to us. وَإِذْ يَرْفَعُ إِبْرَاهِيمُ الْقَوَاعِدَ مِنَ الْبَيْتِ وَإِسْمَاعِيلُ And when Ibrahim was raising up the qawaid, the foundations of the house, and Ismail, both of them, they were doing that. Ibrahim alayhi salam was shown the house by Allah. The foundation, there was no Kaaba when he came. Allah says, وَإِذْ بَوَّأْنَا إِبْرَاهِيمَ مَكَانَ الْبَيْتِ And when we showed Ibrahim, when we showed Ibrahim the place of the house, Allah showed him this. This is the foundation, so start building it. 
And it is reported the foundation was put there by who? Who put the foundation? Adam alayhi salam. Adam was the one who put the foundation of Kaaba. And they said it is said it was actually built, then it was destroyed. So this was the second construction by Ibrahim alayhi salam. وَإِذْ يَرْفَعُ إِبْرَاهِيمُ الْقَوَاعِدِ When you go and you see that house, Ikhwan, for those who have seen it, imagine two people building that. Two people. In an age where there was no cranes and all this equipment, there is Ibrahim, Allah made him a leader. Because Allah tried him, Allah tested him with his mission and he fulfilled it properly. So Allah made him a leader, a role model. Wa Ismailu. And while they were doing this, they were raising up the house. What were they saying? They were just chit chatting? No. What were they saying? Very important dua which everybody needs today. They said, Rabbana. O oh, our Lord, taqabbal minna, accept this from us. Rabbana, taqabbal minna, taqabbal minna. O oh, Allah, accept from us. Innaka anta sami'u al-alim, because surely you, ya Rabb, only you, you are the all-hearing, the most knowledgeable. That is the state of any believer, Ya Khwan. We do good deeds, but we have no guarantee if they're accepted. The true believer is the one who worships Allah and then he asks Allah to accept it. That is why one of the tabi'een he used to say, if I know Allah just accepted one good deed from me, I will be happy. Just one. But most of us, we live with deception because we suffer from a great disease of self amazement al ujb you pray tarawih sad it's very sad you know it's not funny you pray tarawih or you finish the quran and you have to tweet about it i pray tarawih i read the quran who are you, who are you who are you informing again what is the point what is the point that shows you though how the heart is sick and how maybe maybe miskin maybe the heart is not sick he's just deeply ignorant he doesn't know why he's worshiping that is someone who doesn't know why he's worshiping but if you do that on that same point by the way if you do that to encourage others you feel others will be encouraged okay alhamdulillah but most people don't do it for that the true believer he worships allah in a sense of fear maybe this was not even accepted look at the salahs we pray khwan just the salah, which is the basic, every day, five times. Out of that five, seven minutes, ten minutes of the prayer, how much are we actually focused in the prayer? One minute, two minutes? We expect Allah to accept that? That is the salah we are proud of? The believer, he worships Allah and then he is fearful. Maybe it was not accepted. That is why he follows it up with this very important dua. This is a dua for every day. And especially Ramadan, because we increase in ibadah, right? We increase in ibadah, we should increase in this dua. Rabbana taqabbal minna. Oh Allah, accept from us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's, that's, that's how sorry, he described the leader of the believers, our role model, so we have to follow. Look at the action he did. None of us can do that action. It's not just praying. It's not just fasting. What is he doing? What are they doing? They are building the house, that house, the special house. Yet they're making the dua. Rabbana taqabbal minna. Oh Allah, accept from us. Allah says about the believers, الَّذِينَ يُؤْتُونَ مَا أَتَوْ وَقُلُوبُهُمْ وَجِلًا those who do what they have to do, but their hearts are filled with fear. They're filled with fear. Maybe, you know, this won't, won't make it. Is this really, we have, we have to ask ourselves, is this really 
you know, good enough for Allah to accept it. Remember, Allah is not in need of us. We are in need of Him. So this is a very important dua. And it's very easy to remember. Rabbana taqabbal minna. And if we finish it off, it's good also. Innaka anta sami'ul alim. This is verse, the end of verse 127. If you make that your homework for today, just to memorize this, that is a great achievement. Rabbana, O oh our Lord, taqabbal minna, accept from us, please. Innaka anta sami'ul alim. And then they continue to make dua, subhanallah. And if you combine it with this, it's much better. He said what? Rabbana, O oh our Lord, wajjalna and make us, the two of us, muslimayni laka. Make us what? Muslims to you. Muslims to you. Now you get to understand the word Islam, Muslim. What does it mean to be Muslim? What does it mean? To submit to Allah. Make us. Aren't they Muslims already? That's why they're making the dua. Huh? They're Muslims, right? They're building the house for Allah. But we need to submit and resubmit. Because as we know, Ikhwan, especially us, we live in these times of fitan. There's destructions everywhere. We have to ask Allah every now and again to make us submit properly to Him. Rabbana waj'alna muslimayn ilaka and make us those who really submit to you. Wa min dhurriyatina Allahu Akbar. Again. Again. If you're married, if you have children already, if you're not married, these are the du'as you make. Wallahi. He said, Rabbana ja'alna muslimayn ilaka wa ja'alna muslimayn ilaka make us Muslims for you وَمِنْ ذُرِّيَّتِنَا Not just us and from our children, our progeny. Because Allah, it's, a, it's, it's one of the worst things you can suffer in life that Allah guided you and then you see your son or your children going the other way. And I don't mean seeing your son or a child or your daughter just doing something here and there. Some mistake is a child is going to do that. He's an adolescent, he's going to fall in one or two things. No, I mean someone turning away from the religion. I mean, they say, make us those who submit to you and our children, our progeny. Not just submit. Ummatan muslimatan. Make them our children and us an ummah. Now here the word ummah is what? A nation. Here it is a nation. A nation muslimatan lak who submit to you. Wa arina manasikana. And then they asked Allah and show us our manasik. Manasik are the rights. Rights meaning R-I-T-E-S. The acts of worship. The acts of worship. That is called the manasik. Wa arina manasikana. And that is for hajj. As the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, when he went for Hajj, the one and the only time he told people what, "Well, ta'khudu minni manasikakum." You should take from me, watch me, what I do of the manasik of Hajj and Umrah. So they asked Allah after they finished, they are building the house. They said, "Ya Rabb, we are building the house, but then teach us how we are going to do this worship here." Wa arina manasikana. That is why Ibrahim alayhi salam he did Hajj. Ismail alayhi salam, he did hajj. Ishaq, Musa alayhi salam, did he do hajj or not? He did hajj. Yes, he did. Ibrahim alayhi salam was the one who was told to build the house, and then he was told what? Wa'adhin fi nasi lil hajj. He was told, call out people for hajj, and from that day people go for hajj. There's an authentic hadith, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he talked about Masjid Haif. You know Masjid Haif? Masjid Haif is a small masjid close to Mina. You know Masjid Haif? You know about it? It's a small masjid. It's not that big. Maybe it's like this building. Allah Alam. It's not that big. Okay, you can search it up, Masjid Haif. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said about Masjid Haif, 
70 prophets prayed there. 70 prophets prayed in that masjid. It is close to, it's in Mina actually, Mina. Close to the Jamarat. And then they finished off the dua by saying, Watub alayna and forgive our mistakes, accept our repentance. Did they sin? Did they sin? That's why they're asking for repentance? No. Why are they asking for repentance? Huh? They're teaching us. And more than that, because repentance is a must for every human being. It's not just for the sins you know. Maybe the sins you don't know. That's number one. Number two, repenting. Allah loves those who repent. So if you repent just for the sake of repentance and for us we do sin, Allah loves you. Get Allah's love. And also number three, because what are they doing? What are they doing? Don't forget, what are they doing? They are building a house of Allah. That's ibadah, right? That is why after every great ibadah, at the end you do what? Istighfar. When you finish your salah, salamu alaykum wa rahmatullah, salamu alaykum wa rahmatullah, do you say first? Astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. I ask Allah's forgiveness, I ask Allah's forgiveness, I ask Allah's forgiveness. Why? Did you just sin? No. Technically not. You just worshipped Allah, but you ask Allah's forgiveness because you feel I did not do this properly. And even after Hajj, Allah says you should do istighfar. After fasting, when you break your fast, Ibn Umar, from the du'as you'd make, you'd say what? Allahumma rabbana aghfir lana warhamna. When you'd break his fast, that's the du'a he'll make. Oh Allah, forgive me and have mercy on me. Because we do this ibadah, it's true, ikhwani, but are we doing them in the way they're supposed to be done? This is a special du'a every Muslim should pay attention to. All of it. These two verses. From the time they said, رَبَّنَا تَقَبَّلْ مِنَّا إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ السَّمِيُّ الْعَلِيمُ رَبَّنَا جَعَلْنَا مُسْلِمَيْنِ لَكَ وَمِنْ ذُرِّيَّتِنَا أُمَّةً مُسْلِمَةً لَكَ وَأَرِنَا مَنَاسِكَنَا تُبْعَ عَلَيْنَا إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ التَّوَّابُ الرَّحِيمُ Or you can shorten it and just say رَبَّنَا تَقَبَّلْ مِنَّا إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ السَّمِيُّ Show us the manasi because you have been shown by the Prophet already. But if you want to make dua with the first part of Ayah 128, that is good. And this is in the form of uh, Al Muthanna. It is in the dual. So in the, you yourself, you can say what? Rabbi Jalni Muslim Allah. Make me a Muslim for you. وَمِنْ ذُرِّيَّتِي And from my progeny. أُمَّةً مُسْلِمَةً لَكَ Allah, that is great. These are the great people who worshipped Allah. That is why Allah said to us, follow him. Follow his way. Follow his way. That is a great dua. That is what we need every single day. Now something which you can mention يعني, about the house and it says here وَإِذْ إِبْرَاهِيمُ الْقَوَاعِدَ مِنَ الْبَيْتُ إِسْمَعِيلُ When Ibrahim was raising up the foundations of the house the house as you see it today is it in the same way Ibrahim السلام, built it? No? Are you sure? You're sure? How is it different? Huh? What is missing? Aywa? The Hijr Ismail. You have seen the Kaaba? The Kaaba is like a cube, right? The Kaaba is a, is a cube. Then there's the part here which has a small wall which goes, is carved like that. That small wall which is carved in one of the sides of the Kaaba. You have seen that? Sometimes people go inside there and pray. That is called Hijr Ismail. It's just... It was never called Hijr Ismail then, but people just call it that now. That is part of the Kaaba. The original Kaaba built by Ibrahim alayhi salam, 
That is where the Kaaba ends. But just before the Prophet ﷺ was a prophet, he was already born, he's in Mecca. Because at what age was our Prophet Muhammad ﷺ became a prophet? 40. When he was born, he did not know I'm a prophet. You have to know that. When he became 40, Allah gave him prophethood. But people knew there was something special about him. Before he was a prophet. For those who have gone to Mecca again and those who don't know about Mecca, it is called the valley, Wadi. It is a valley. So when it rains, all that water collects. And if you have seen maybe old pictures of the Kaaba, you'll see how it's filled with water sometimes up to half. There was a flood and the Kaaba was destroyed. Now this is the time the Quraysh are worshipping idols. You know the time of Jahiliyyah, it's called Jahiliyyah. They used to do the worst things you can think of. Worst things you can think of. In killing each other, stealing, raping, uh, riba, drinking. You, that's worst, thing you can th worst things you can think of. But they had some senses also. Very funny people. When the house was destroyed, they say we have to redo Allah's house. But we will only do it with halal money. <laughs> they are worshipping idols. They kill each other. You know, they commit zina every day. It's open. They're drinking alcohol. All of that they do. But they know this is Allah's house. They used to know that. That's why Allah reminds them. Alam tara kayfa fa'ala rabbuka bi ashab al-fil. That's why Allah reminds them li ilaf al-Quraysh and all these verses. They said we'll only do it with halal money. This money we get from riba and this money we get from stealing. No, we won't do it with that. So they collected money and it was not enough to bring it to what it was. That is why they fell short to what it is today. And so they put that mark. That mark is put today to show you this is the actual boundary of the, of the Kaaba. When they finished it now, it was the time to put what? The Hajar al-Aswad, the special black stone. Now they started fighting again. Who will have the special uh, 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 um, honor of putting the special stone? Every tribe said, us, us, us. Until they reached the decision, they said, what? Okay, let's not fight. The first person who enters the masjid, he will decide. Whatever tribe he comes from, it doesn't matter. And the first person who entered was our oh, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And they said, ah, laqad ja al He has come, the most trustful, trustworthy one, the good person. The best person who can come. He came to them and said, well, don't fight. What should we do? Bring a piece of cloth. Let's put the stone in the middle. And each member from the each tribe holds one part of the cloth. And all of you take it there together and then he put it there. And that is how the house is today. You understand? But even after this, even after this, I'm just giving a brief history. During the time of Abdullah ibn Zubair, radiallahu anhuma, uh, when the people of Sham were fighting in Abdul Malik ibn Marwan, the house got destroyed. Parts of it. Parts of it got destroyed. So Abdullah ibn Zubair, radiallahu anhuma, he said, speaking to the people, what do you say? That we take it down and bring it to its original foundation. Because I heard the Prophet وسلم, saying this is an authentic hadith. He said to Aisha, I heard Aisha saying that the Prophet وسلم, said what? لَوْ لَمْ يَكُنْ أَهْلُكْ حَدِيثُ عَهْدٍ بكفر. If it was not that your people, the people of Mecca, just became Muslims. This is the last days of the Prophet وسلم, he said this. If it was not for the fact they just entered into Islam, they wouldn't understand. Huh? And I would have taken it out, I would have taken it down, sorry, and built it on the foundations of Ibrahim, 
وَجَعَلْتُ لَهُ بَابَان And I made for it two doors, one door to enter and one door to exit. That is how it was. That is the point. But he couldn't do it, he said, because of what? If it was not the fact that your people, they are new Muslims, they just entered into Islam, the people of Makkah, who have been fighting Islam all these years. Now Makkah is under Muslims. And they see one of the first things which happen is what? The Kaaba is being taken down. They'll all leave Islam. That tells about the great principle of Islam of what? Ishtaqul al qaida uh, what does the principle say? Jalb al Masalih Muqaddam ala Dar al Mafasid. Dar al Mafasid Muqaddam ala Jalb al Masalih. Preventing the harms is given more precedence than bringing about good. And the great principle in everything in our lives, anything which has more harm than good, then don't do it, even if it is good. But Ibn, Ibn Zubair, now after I mentioned this hadith, the people said, oh, Ibn Zubair, we don't know about that. If you do that, maybe Allah will punish us. We take down his house. And he said, Inni, I... I'm going to pray istikhara for three days. He prayed istikhara. After three days, he came out. He said, what? I feel comfortable. We should take it down and build it on the foundations of Ibrahim salam, and give it two doors. A door to enter and a door to exit. Everybody got scared. They said, we won't come close. And they let just one man go up to take down the bricks. They, they would not destroy it, meaning bulldoze it, no. They would take it brick by brick and rebuild it. That's what they would do. So everybody sat watching. The only person who went up there, when he takes down the first brick, what will happen to him? He took down the brick, he took another one, so there's nothing. So they all participated. And they built it again on the foundations of Ibrahim salam, with two doors. Now this is about fifty. Uh, this is about sixty years after the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Fifty, sixty years after the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam passed away. Al Hajjaj, who was there. On the side of Abdul Malik bin Marwan, he went and gave news to Abdul Malik bin Marwan. So after they defeated uh, uh, Abdullah bin Zubair, after Abdullah bin Zubair was killed, they said, we won't agree with Ibn Zubair in anything he does. So they took it down again, and they built it in the foundations which are from the Quraysh. And that is how it is until today. That is how it is until today. And to give you more history, to know the evilness and the hubf of the Shia to Rafidah. They came, the Karamiya, they stole that black stone. You know the black stone people kiss? It was stolen for almost 200 or 300 years. Those who were ruling Yemen at that time, the Shia to Rafidah. They stole the black stone. And when it was finally brought back, it was brought back, just pieces were remaining. Right now you have to know the black stone, it is just pieces. It's just small fragments. Those fragments are put together in something holding them. That is why it is inside. But otherwise it was a stone. It was a stone. An actual stone, a brick. So if you see them today killing Ahl Sunnah in Iraq and in Syria and in Yemen, this is not new. This is not new. So this is some of the brief history of the house. And you know the black cloth they put, the kiswa? This is quite new also. This is around 70, 80, 100 years. 
before it used to be white. It used to be white and it used to come from Egypt, from Misr. And there was a big fight when the Saudis, they decided to do it themselves. This was way, way before now, like 60 years maybe now. It used to come from Egypt. And before that, of course, it was under the Dawla Uthmaniyya. But you know how much that cloth is worth? Who knows? The Kiswa. You know how much it's worth? That is the best or one of the best silk you can find in the world. First, you have to know. You know, there's a special factory just to make that, right? Who has visited that factory? There's a special factory just to make that. And it is changed every year. When is it changed? That writing you see is pure gold. It's thread of gold. It is thread of gold. Does it have to be covered though? Someone may ask. Or is that, if I go there, do I have to touch that kiswa? No, there's nothing special about that kiswa itself. Other than it being expensive. You know, there's no religious uh, 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 benefit from touching it. What do they do with the kiswa after they take it out? Because they take it out after one year and they put a new one. So what do they do with the, with the last one? Who knows? Huh? No, they give it to the, the, the emissaries, you know, official visitors to the country. Some of the ulama, they're given. You know, if you want, you can get a piece if you have right connections. No, I'm serious. I'm serious. There's one sheikh who I met, he, he told me, and if you want, we can get you a piece. How much do you guys buy it for if I have one? <laughs> <laughs> so this, <laughs> or it's haram to sell it, who said it's haram to sell it? Is it haram to sell it? Some people are so crazy, they would buy the sand, which is from Madiya, said, oh, this is Medina dust, Medina sand, so it has baraka. Uh, people are that crazy. Imagine having the actual kiswa. I'm retiring tomorrow. <laughs> huh? Some people, subhanAllah, they go and they try to cut it. That is why you see the days when there's a lot of crowd, it is what? It is folded up. It is folded up. But it's just a brief history about the house. And if you know the door is open, they can open that door, right? You have seen how they go and clean inside. Inside it has pillars. Pillars like this, because it has to have pillars. It has pillars holding it. It has pillars holding it. And those who hold the key is a special tribe. We could say it's special because that was their duty since before Islam. And when the Prophet Sallam, the Muslims, they took over the Mecca, he also kept those duties for them. What is that tribe called? Banu Shayba. Banu Very good. So even today, it is only people from Banu Shayba and some of the Amirs who go there and they carry brooms and they clean. Inside the Kaaba is not the workers from outside who clean. It's the Banu Shaiba and the Amirs and they clean. And they put the nice best Bakhur in there eh, and Zamzam. And this is a brief history of the house. So Ibrahim alayhi salam he made the dua and then Allah continues to tell us some of more of the dua he made. Rabbana, O oh our Lord, this is 129, Wa him Rasulan and bring forth, send from them, from them. وَبْعَثْ فِيهِمْ مَنْ فِيهِمْ Who's فِيهِمْ? Who are they? لا. His progeny. Ibrahim just made dua for what? Ummatan Muslima. From my dhurriya, bring an ummah which is Muslim. From my children, bring people who submit to you. But not only that, he made a more special dua. He said, what? وَبْعَثْ فِيهِمْ And from my children, bring forth, send forth, Rasulan, minhum. A messenger from them. يَتْلُوا عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتِكْ This messenger will do what? He recites your verses to them. وَيُعَلِّمُهُمُ الْكِتَابَ And he teaches them the book. وَالْحِكْمَةَ 
and the Sunnah. All of the Tabi'een, most of the Sahaba, they said when Allah says Al Kitab Al Hikmah, the Hikmah is the Sunnah. The Hikmah is the Sunnah. Wal Hikmata wa yuzakkihim and you purifies them. This is important. Knowledge and tazkiyah. Knowledge and tazkiyah. Not just knowledge. Find someone who studied all the books, but his heart is hard. He never cried for Allah. He doesn't get moved and, and to help poor orphans and, and poor people. You find him is full of hatred and envy and jealousy. You find him is bakhil. You find him is full of hiqd uh, uh, to others. He has knowledge, but knowledge which does not benefit. There's no tazkiyah. No tazkiyah. Knowledge and tazkiyah. Wa yu'allimuhum al-kitab wa al-hikmata wa yuzakkihim and he purifies their souls. Innaka anta al-aziz al-hakim because you surely Allah, you are al-aziz, the most mighty, al-hakim, the most wise. Al-aziz, the most mighty, you can do whatever you want. This is the dua he made. So did Ibrahim know that from my children will be a prophet called Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Did he know that? He didn't know that. He doesn't know the future. But he was someone who made dua. And Allah accepted the dua. That is why the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in the hadith when the Sahaba they came and they said, Ya Rasulullah, tell us about yourself. He said what? Ana da'wati abi Ibrahim. I am the dua of my father Ibrahim. I am the dua of my father Ibrahim. He made dua, subhanAllah, so yekhwan, you never know. Of course, we cannot make the same dua because there's no prophets who are coming. But don't look down on dua. You never know when is the time Allah is accepting. Not just for yourself. Make dua for Allah to bring from you. Progeny, a children who will be great leaders because all of those who come, you have to know. Your children, your grandchildren, your great grandchildren. See, all of the good deeds Prophet Muhammad وسلم, he did, Ibrahim وسلم, has a reward also. You know that. Because when you do good, your father's account it ticks. Especially if he's the one who helped you in teaching you that, especially if he made dua for that. So we have to make dua for Allah to give us good children. It's very important. Some of the parents, all they do is complain. You ask, Akhi, why are you complaining so much about your son or your daughter? When is the last time you made dua for them? He can't remember. So who are you blaming? That's the least you can do for your child. That is a given. That is why you said, Ya Ibrahim is what? A leader, role model. Allah is telling us, look, follow, follow. He made dua. We should make dua. But also the important point in this ayah, khwani, ilm, knowledge and tazkiyah. Shouldn't be just knowledge. Knowledge and tazkiyah. The outward worship and also don't lose focus on the heart. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then says, وَمَنْ يَرْغَبُ عَمْ مِلَّةِ إِبْرَاهِيمَا إِلَّا مَنْ سَفِهَا نَفْسَهَا and none turns away, يَرْغَبُ عَنْ turns away from مِلَّةَ إِبْرَاهِيم the way of Ibrahim except who? مَنْ سَفِهَا نَفْسَهَا the one who has done what? He has fooled himself. Anybody who turns away from the way of Ibrahim is only someone who has fooled himself. وَلَقَدْ اسْتَفَيْنَاهُ فِي الدُّنْيَا and this includes the Jews and the Christians, by the way. Because they turned away from his way, his millah, and they invented Judaism, and those ones invented Christianity. That is why Allah, he said, in this same surah, uh, or is it Ali Imran, مَا كَانَ إِبْرَاهِيمُ يَهُودِيًّا وَلَا نَصْرَانِيًّا yeah, Ibrahim was not a Jew or a Christian. Like we said, all of, everybody loves Ibrahim. So the Jews, they claimed Ibrahim. The Christians, they claimed Ibrahim. He was a Jew. He was a Christian. Allah said, He was never a Jew nor a Christian. وَلَكِنْ كَانَ حَنِيفًا مُسْلِمًا He was a Muslim, was Hanif. Hanif is someone who always turns to Allah. He always turns to Allah, running away from the other false gods. 
Hanif is someone who turns to Allah always. He's far away from the falsity. And how can Ibrahim be a Jew when Judaism came after? I said this here before, right? I said this here before. How can Ibrahim be a Christian when Christianity came after? It's like someone saying to you today, you are following the way of your great-great-grandson who's to come 200 years after today. How? You understand? Allah says, whoever turns away from the mill of Ibrahim is only someone who has fooled himself. He's not fooling anyone. Allah says about Ibrahim, وَلِقَدِ اسْتَفَيْنَاهُ فِي الدُّنْيَا We chose him, Allah said. We made him special. We chose him in this world. And Allah uses this word also for who? For Musa alayhi salam. إِنِّ اسْتَفَيْتُكَ بِرِسَالَاتِ وَبِكَلَامِ and Allah also said about so many prophets, من المستفين الأخيار huh? Allah chose them. That's why we say, Akhwan, Wallah, this is important. This is something I like to emphasize. All of us, we grew up, the world we grew up in, most of us at least, we didn't have these teachings. Most of us, we grew up, our role models are either athletes, you know, soccer players, maybe musicians, maybe actors, whatever. I mean politicians. But for the Muslim, these should be our role models. Allah said, the prophets, those are the greatest humans ever. Allah, he chose them. So for whoever us who have children today, or those who are planning to get married and have children tomorrow, make sure this is a point you make with your children. That the people they really look up to and follow are the prophets of Allah. Because Allah commands us, if you really believe in the book, Allah says, follow them. Follow them. Follow them. And you cannot follow them unless you study the Quran and you actually see, okay, this is how these people were. Allah says, we chose him in this dunya, وَإِنَّهُ فِي الْآخِرَةِ لَمِنَ الصَّالِحِينَ And surely in the Akhirah, he is from the group of the Salihin. He has the highest grades of paradise. Why? Why all of this, Yaqwan, about Ibrahim? إِذْ قَالَ لَهُ رَبُّهُ أَسْلِمْ Because when his Lord said to him, أَسْلِمْ, submit to me. قال, right away he said what? أَسْلَمْتُ I have submitted لِرَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ to the Lord of the universe. He submitted. That's why Allah chose him, made him special, made him a role model, and in the hereafter is from the highest ones it's from the highest ones Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then explains the wasiyah of Ibrahim yeah? we should finish with this when he was about to pass away and you know in other parts of the Quran Allah explains other details of the life of Ibrahim like when he just became a prophet and how he gave da'wah to his own father and his own people. After that, they kicked him out how he went to Mecca. After that, how he got a son. Huh? After that, the story between him and Nimrud, which will come in Al-Baqarah, the king. Huh? All of this Allah tells us so we can learn. All of this so that we can learn. Allah says, وَوَصَّى بِهَا إِبْرَاهِيمُ And Ibrahim, he counseled this, he advised, he willed it. This was his will. This was his final advice. To who? Banihi, to his sons. To his sons. Wa Ya'qubu, Ya'qubu, marfu'un, li'annahu fa'il. Allah emphasizes now here, and also Ya'qub. Why is Allah mentioning Ya'qub here? Because remember the context was just about Banu Israel. Allah says, and when Ibrahim, he gave us his final will, and Yaqub, Israel, to their children. Now this is a father, and who? A grandson. A grandson. So this is the advice Ibrahim he gave to his sons, Ismail and Ishaq, when he was passing away. 
And this was the advice Ishaq gave to his sons, Ya'qub, and we don't know who else. And this was the advice Ya'qub he gave to his 12 sons, Yusuf and his brothers. What is the advice they gave? Ya Baniya, O oh my sons, Inna Allah, surely Allah, Istafa, He has chosen, Lakumuddin, for you a religion. Allah has chosen for you the religion, Fala Tamutunna, so make sure you do not die, except Illa, Wa Antum, Yahud, Wa Antum, Nasara, Wa Antum, Muslimun. That word is used in the right place, like we said, to show that Ibrahim was a Muslim. Yaqub was a Muslim. They only came with Islam. And that is the advice they gave their children when they were passing away. Do not die, except that you, Allah has chosen for your religion. What does that part mean? It means this is what your Lord who created you has chosen. There's nothing for you to decide now. Meaning this is the right religion. So if you choose any other religion, all you're doing is what? Illa man safiha nafsa. You're only fooling yourself. You're only fooling yourself. You might choose, but it's not the religion Allah chose for you. Fala tamutunna. So make sure you do not die. And this is a very important point. Meaning prepare yourself every moment that when death comes, I'm actually a Muslim, alhamdulillah. And this Allah, he gave it to us also. And it is repeated to us every Friday, every time someone gets married from the khutbatul haja, the Prophet Sallallahu will recite those three verses. One of these three verses says what? Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu attaqullaha haqqa tuqatihi wa la tamutunna illa wa antum wa la tamutun fa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun. So this is the advice Ibrahim السلام, he gave to his sons and also Ya'qub السلام, and Ya'qub السلام. Allah then replies now goes back to Banu Israel Allah says to them because they changed this, the religion and they claimed Ibrahim and Ya'qub were Jews or Christians Allah says to them Am kuntum shuhada, or were you witnesses present when when death came to Ya'qub, were you there? When he said, Ya'qub, to his sons, what are you going to worship after me? Now I'm passing away. They replied saying what? How many sons were there? Twelve. They said, Na'budu ilahaka, we worship your Lord. Wa ilaha abaika, and the Lord of your forefathers. Who are they? Ibrahim, wa Ismail, wa Ishaq. Ilahan wahida, the only one true deity, the only one true God. Wa nahnu lahu muslimun. And we are to him Muslimun. Allah asked them, were you there? Now you're claiming that they were, they, were, they were Jews or they were Christian, were you there? The answer is no, this is what happened. They said, and look at the Quran, subhanAllah. It says we follow the, we worship your Lord and the Lord of your forefathers. Who's the father of Yaqub though? So why didn't they say Abaika Ishaq? And then the father of Ishaq is Ibrahim. Why didn't they say that? Because Ibrahim is the one who's greater than them. Because Ibrahim is the main father. Ibrahim and then Ismail and then Ishaq. Because Ismail was older than Ishaq. وَنَحْنُ لَهُ مُسْلِمُونَ And we are Muslims to him. Allah says, تِلْكَ أُمَّةٌ قَدْ خَلَتْ That is an ummah, a people who have passed. 
what we just mentioned to you, Allah says, Allah says the point is what? You should learn. You should learn. But the underlying factor is again, قَدْ خَلَتْ They have passed. لَهَا مَا كَسَبَتْ They will have what they did. وَلَكُمْ مَا كَسَبْتُمْ And you shall have what you do. وَلَا تُسْأَلُونَ عَمَّا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ And you will not be asked about what they used to do. The point is learn from them. They did good, that was for themselves. You will have what is good for yourself if you do it. You won't be asked about them just like they won't be asked about you. Just like they won't be asked about you. We'll stop here for today. We'll stop here for today, inshallah, and continue tomorrow.